Has anybody got a prayer request? Be praying for Sarah. Be praying for Sarah, yes. She's had a this morning. Let's go, man. Sister Victoria.
started. Just start. I'll fly away.
blessings of God. Hallelujah. Does that mean everything's just going to go perfect for the rest of your life? No. No, but we got God. Hallelujah. We can have joy in knowing that he's in control. Count it all joy when you fall into dire temptations. Are you saying I'm supposed to be happy when bad things happen? No. But you can be happy knowing that this life is only a vapor. Someday we're going to spend eternity with him and everything is going to be perfect then. Praise God. Lord, you're great. Hallelujah. Brother Kevin. Because it says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And he that the Son has set free is free indeed, right? We don't, we don't have to worry about what's coming in the future, like me and Dad was talking about before church. It's all going to happen. But, God wants to show himself in all of it. There's going to be a remnant of people that are going to be faithful. And they're going to shine through all the things that are going to happen. No matter how bad it gets. No matter how hard the trials are. And I felt before I got up here, I was thinking along these lines. The Bible says, I forget exactly where it was. It was talking about whenever you begin your, your, your journey in God. After you really come to understand what this is all about, that you're gonna you're gonna fight a great flood of affliction, affliction, and these things don't come upon you for you to be discouraged. These things come upon you to build your faith, and through these things, if you'll hold on, that you're gonna become something that God wants you to be because of it. Because he wants to show something to you. If you're willing to hold on through all the things that don't seem to make sense. Why it seems like when you get things going the way you want them to go, it all of a sudden just flips around and it don't seem like it's going right. It don't seem like anything's working out the way it's supposed to work. But God's working in the middle of it all. And that's where I want to be. Don't you sing that song? Can you live it all? It's, I know it's been a long time. Would you? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was her. Yeah, she's If you don't mind, would you do that? I'll try something with you. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody can sing it, though.
Paul's life, it seemed like it was just one big trial all the way up to the end. But all the things that God was able to use him for, to do with him, the things that God was able to, the people that God was able to reach, the opportunities that he was given, even when in the middle of troubles, when his boat just completely was destroyed and they had to spend so much time on that island converting all them people. Even the governor getting an opportunity to be healed. His mother was healed. Was his father healed? And all those things that happened, and he had to he had to go to he had to go until the end. And even at the end, he spent his time in prison. But God was still working through it the right numbers. Don't get mixed up in the trial and think maybe God's not in this. Sometimes it's right where you need to be in the middle of it. Praise the Lord. For I want to be right in the middle of it all. I don't know, sometimes I think, you know, when we're talking about the spirit falling, I always feel like it's just right in the center, from the pulpit. <laughs> In my mind's eye, that's what I picture as the spirit starts falling. Flowing out through all the church, praise God. Hallelujah. But I want to be in the middle of it all. Hallelujah. Because that's where the blessings are. Underneath the spout where the Holy Ghost is being poured out. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Hanson, you got a song? You know, testify tonight, whatever you got in your heart. Praise the Lord.
Praise God. We'll be ready when he calls the church. Sister Rossi, just come on up here and sing, testify, preach, well, whatever you have on your heart there. Just obey God. I was, the church it looks a whole lot better. The last time I was here, it's been quite a while because I've been under the weather, but I'm coming out of the weather. Thank God for that, you know. It's been a, about the fourth time I've been to another church since I've been sick, other than going to the Arn Hill. That's where I go now. That's my home church. And, but anyway, the last time I was here, God was tearing stuff out. And I walked in, I said, whoa, man, you got, got it nice out here now. So, you know, so I'm, I'm glad it's all improving. And I'm believing that God's going to give you a whole building full of people. People in the altar praying through. And I was looking and says, where's your pastor at? You got a pastor? Well, cut that out and make a pastor. water dropped downstairs. I mean, something, huh? Do it by faith, brother. Do it by faith. I told Brother Darren before we had a revival, he was over there in Purvey, and I said, you know, fill that bastard up by faith that somebody's going to get baptized, and we got three got baptized in that revival. Praise God. Um, I was coming to church tonight, and I said, Lord, I said, you know, what song do you want? Not what I want, but what? do you want in case he decides he wants to ask me to sing or something and this song has come to my mind off and on man it might have the last couple of days it's been on my mind but it, it's come it left and then it come back again so this is what the Lord has laid on my heart I think it's key of L something beautiful
something beautiful all my life. If you if you ever received the Holy Ghost, it's the same way with you. But if you had received the Holy Ghost, God wants to take those pieces and He wants to put them back together and make something beautiful out of your life tonight. Go, go ahead and get the chorus of the verse of this again. If there ever were dreams that was lofty and noble, they were my dreams at the start. And the hopes of my best were the hopes that I harbored way down deep in my heart. But my dreams turned to ashes, my castles are crumbled, my fortune turned to Hey. 
No, I said, I had two on my mind. I couldn't decide which one to sing. So you sang one of those. I said, well, that makes it easy. I'm just warming up. I think we have another chance to be back together in his house, his people. I don't ever want to take it for granted. I don't ever want to miss the opportunity to gather together, to uplift and encourage one another, to be a help to each other. Amen. Well, I went to visit church.
chapter 6. <clears throat> Abigail sung that song. Cast the bread upon the water. Hallelujah. And it'll come back to you. <clears throat> Teach on a subject this evening, the law of reaping and sowing. Hallelujah. Anybody here believe you're going to reap what you sow? I've heard the old adage, what goes around comes around. The Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I've lived long enough to see that you do reap what you sow. So Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And you can be seated. Don't get weary in well-doing. Sometimes, you know, you're living for God and you feel like, you know, everything's going good and you're excited. You want to praise God for the blessings in our lives. You know, things are going good, but what about when the bottom falls out? Don't get weary in well-doing. You will reap in due season if you faint not. Hallelujah. And that's like I was saying the other day about it. if you feed the spiritual man... You're going to grow spiritually. And if you feed the carnal man, the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to grow spiritually in God. But he tells us, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Everywhere. You're known by your fruits. Hallelujah. And if you do good to all men, hallelujah. You're going to reap good. Yeah. Are you saying nobody will ever cheat me? No, I'm not saying that. There's always people that are going to do wrong. I, I've noticed that a cheat always thinks someone's trying to cheat them. A liar they always thinks someone's trying to lie to them. And right on down the line, hallelujah. I don't want to live my life paranoid. I just keep on doing good. But he says, especially to them of the household of faith. And some people think, well, you're supposed to do better to church folks than the others. Hallelujah. Supposed to do good unto all. Hallelujah. But if you give a glass of water to a child of God in the name of the 
a child of God, you won't lose your reward. Uh, everything that you do has repercussions. Hallelujah. Just like the law that says every action has an equal but opposite reaction. Well, in the spirit, everything that you do has repercussions. It comes back to you one way or another. Hallelujah. What a man sows follows the universal law of kind, reproduces kind. Hallelujah. If you're kind hearted, y'all are different ones. You know what? Brother Kevin, Brother Jeremy, different ones. They, they said to me, so why is it people? I, I don't even know them. And they come up and they just start opening it up and they start telling me all the problems. You know, I'm not talking about the kind that, that you walk up and shake the hand and say, how you doing? And you wish you never asked. Because <laughs> you're going to hear every ailment from, from the bunion down there on your foot all the way up to not on the top of their head. But I, I'm talking about people just opening up, you know. The problems of talking to you. want somebody just to, to talk to. Why do they do that, you know? Well, it's because they realize you care. They can take a, feel that spirit of somebody cares. Hallelujah. And they open up. And that's what God wants us to do. If you care about others, others will care about you. You're not doing it to receive from somebody else. But it's just the law of reaping and sowing. Kind reproduces kind. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. And that's what I'm talking about tonight, reaping what you sow. All right? You shall know them by your, their fruits. Do men gather grapes? of thorns or figs of thistles. You know, a true Christian will reproduce hallelujah, the fruits of the Spirit. If you got the goods, they're going to be manifest in your life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. The Bible says against such there is no law. Well, you don't have to go by law when you've got these things in your heart, when it's part of your everyday life. Hallelujah. You're going to reap what you sow. Even so, verse 17 says, Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. It just doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. Trees reproduce in kind. Hallelujah. Verse 19 said, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by the fruits you shall know them. He's talking about false teachers here in this section of Scripture. You know, they might deceive some. Some might follow after them. You know, I was looking up something earlier, well, yesterday, yesterday. You know, where Jesus was telling his disciples that there shall be false Christ, saying, you know, I am Christ. Don't follow after him. And uh, I wonder really how often that happens. And man, down through history, there's been a bunch of them. There's at least seven people in the world today that are claiming to be Christ and have followers. One's even the cross dresser. Um, <laughs> crazy direction but the word of God if you know the truth you're not going to be deceived by these things hallelujah you can tell by the fruits whether they're of God or not David said I have been young and now I am old yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread hallelujah why well basically because of the laws of the Bible if you obey the word, that's a benefit, reaping what you sow. You know, this It's not just a, a promise out of God's word, but it's also a product of, of living for God. David was young, now he's old, and he's never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. And a lot of people never really understood that about David. Hallelujah. 
The law of the Jews says you cannot see your brother hungry and not feed him. You can't do that. So if a man is hungry, he doesn't have to beg if he was part of the family of God. It's just part of the duty of the house of God, of the children of God, to take care of one another. You know, you, you reap what you sow. You know, talking about faithfulness and different things like that. Hallelujah. You know, I, I seen a young boy, and I don't guess I'll mention his name, but Brother Gabriel Coco. I, I've known him ever since he was just a little kid. And the boy's always been faithful and diligent in everything he does, whether it's a project, whether it's living for God or doing something with the youth group or something, everything he's asked to do, he's always faithful in what he does, you know, and, and, I, and I seen him get old enough and, and get a job, and he always had an interest in, you know, working with his hands, I know I seen him getting interested in wood carving and things like that in his younger life, I, just, I gave him a whole bunch of tools, jigsaws, drills, carving tools, just all kind of different stuff, you know, just to encourage it, because I love to see a young man that's willing to work with his hands. And I, <clears throat> but I seen him grow up and he got a job with a construction company and he was only 17 years old. And they, he was so diligent on the job, they wanted him to take over a crew and they were gonna give him the company truck, the company credit card. And then they found out he's only 17. They realized it and said, well, he said, well, we'll just wait till your birthday. <laughs> And they went ahead and gave the man, you know, and I thought that's that's a product of being faithful. And if you're faithful in everything you do, you're going to reap faithfulness. Hallelujah. You know, and the children of God, the world ought to be able to see something. I remember Richie Stanfield when he first started working. And he worked in a tire shop and he doing what he's supposed to be doing, and then he come back after he got that done, I told his boss, he said, I got that done, what do you want me to do now? And every time he got done with what he had to do, he come back and asked what he knew. And his boss told him, he said, you know, son, you're an oddity. He said, what do you mean? He said, I ain't never had no teenage boy come back and ask what you want me to do next. He said, you're a good worker. Hallelujah. Well, that, that's good. I like to hear that said about folks that are living for God. Hallelujah. But reaping and sowing, hallelujah, is a promise with a warning. You know, if you're sowing good, that's good. But if you're not sowing good, that's not good. Luke 6 and 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. And running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You know how many times you hear folks say you can't outgive God. You give and it's coming back. God will open up the windows of heaven. But if you if you rob God, God told the children of Israel one time that they had robbed him and they said, Where have we robbed you? And God said, Tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. And that brought a curse on their life. The Bible says that you wind up earning wages to put in bags with holes and you wonder why your money doesn't go nowhere. And you look at someone that's faithful and paying their tithes and giving to the church and working for the church and for God it seems like God just blesses their life. Well, it's not a coincidence. The Word of God says so. You know, there's a problem people have with self-deceit. It's the nature of a man to justify his actions. The Bible tells the way of every man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Hallelujah. I, 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 you know, I'm thinking different times. I said, Lord, I, I wish you'd do this for me. You know, I'd be able to live for you. you know? How many times did someone said, Lord, I wish I had a million dollars. That might not help you live for God. Hallelujah. It might make you fall out for God. Praise God. Jeremiah 17 and 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. 
You wonder why sometimes you go through trials? God is trying you to see what you will do. He knows. He's trying you so you will know what you will do. Hallelujah. He's trying you to make you stronger. Hallelujah. God knew how Job was going to respond when he allowed the devil to put him through what he went through. Hallelujah. But Job wound up growing as a result of it. Hallelujah. The curse. I wrote that down. Not funny. Of being a know-it-all. Hallelujah. You ever see someone say know-it-all? I've been guilty of acting that way before, I'll be honest. So I knew one fellow one time, no matter what you said, he had an answer whether he knew it was or not. Another brother looked at him one time and he said, have you ever just, just once thought about saying, I don't know? <laughs> well, it kind of struck home to me because I was kind of guilty of the same thing. You know? But uh, there's a curse of being a know-it-all. I walked down the hallway to high school one time with Larry Warren was the assistant principal. He said, Ray Seymour said, the man that knows it all. I said, yeah, Mr. Warren, you know what really ticks me off? He said, what's that? I said, all these other people out here that think they know it all make someone like me who really does look bad. <laughs> you got to laugh. Hallelujah. But it can be a curse. Hallelujah. Because you don't want to think you're right when you're not. Proverbs 12 and 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Don't, don't think you know so much that you can't take time to listen to somebody else. I've seen people that, are, that had that attitude and you know they just keep cutting them off and talking about something else. You may feel like you know it, but no matter who you are, if someone tells you something, it doesn't hurt to ponder that. It doesn't hurt to go off and study that out and make sure. Hallelujah. I've learned things from little kids. Hallelujah. You'd be surprised what a little kid could show you. There was a story told about this old man, and, and he'd been around so long in the community, and everybody came to him and asked him questions, you know, and he'd give them the answers, you know, things he'd experienced in his life. And, and he just got to the point where, you know, I think I'm just going to retire and sit on my porch and just let folks come and ask me of my wisdom. Since I know so much. And there he was, of course, this was apostolic folks, obviously, but he was sitting on his porch one morning. The first morning, he was going to just, you know, give his wisdom out to everybody else. And this little boy comes running down the road. And he said, hey, son. This is back in the old days. He said, come here. He said, yes, sir. He said, son, run and fetch me a coal of fire so I can light my pipe. And the boy started talking. He said, wait, wait a minute, son. said, you need something? Carry it in. And the boy was gone just that fast. And directly the little boy come running back. And he had his hands cuffed. And the old man was what in the world? You know. And the little boy got up and he had a little pile of ashes in his hand and a little coal of fire sitting right in the middle of it. He looked at that and said, I never thought of that. He said, I guess I better get back off my porch and go to work. <laughs> I don't know it all. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not condoning smoking pipes, but that was the way the story went. But he learned something. You're never too old to learn. Never. Hallelujah. So we want to reap what we sow. Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I've, I've said a lot of times, Lord, you know me better than I know myself. And he does. He knows us. Hallelujah. I, I'd rather put myself in the hands of a living God than in, in, in my own wisdom. You know, people think like David was given the choice. Well, you sinned. Now this death angel's over Israel and he's slaying people. Or it actually hadn't happened yet. God asked him, said, do you want to suffer at the hands of the death angel? Do you want your enemies to overtake you for so many months? Do you want famine? This or that. And, you know, a lot of people would be of the mentality, let me see if I can figure this out. I want to make sure I get away with this, the least I can get away with. And David just said, Lord... 
I'll leave it in your hands. You know what's best. Because God's going to do what's best. It's going to work out for the best. Hallelujah. The Lord knows us better than we know ourselves. Hallelujah. Proverbs 21 2 says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the heart. David used to pray, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See whether there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And I like to add that into my prayers sometimes. Hallelujah. Because I want to make it. I always like what Brother Pazuti used to say, Lord, if you don't help me, I'm not going to make it. And we're not. We have to rely on him if we're going to make it. Job chapter 4 and verse 8. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Hallelujah. Makes me think of that little song, you know, be careful. Little mouth, what you say. Careful little ears, what you hear. Be careful little eyes, what you see. Hallelujah. Be careful little hands, what you do. You're going to reap what you sow. All through the Bible, we can see that we reap what we sow. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Anybody know what happens in Matthew chapter 5? The Beatitudes. And that's nothing but a bunch of examples of reaping what you sow. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And that's the key. Falsely. Hallelujah. I don't want to suffer as a... How to exactly word it? Bible put it in a certain way, you know, as an evil doer. Hallelujah! If you're being persecuted, it better be for doing good, not for doing evil. Hallelujah! Rejoice, the Bible tells us, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted. Here today, the prophets, which were before you, Hallelujah. you're going to reap what you sow. I'm about to close, but uh, I'm hoping somebody gets something about out of this. It's, it's a simple thought, and it's a principle in the Word of God. It's a principle of life. You will reap what you sow. And I'm closing, I have a little something a little humorous, and this is true, actually. Sir Robert Watson Watt was the inventor of radar. You ever, you ever got a ticket by a police shooting radar gun? Then stopped. Officer said he's speeding. This is the man that invented it. He was arrested himself for speeding. He had been caught in a radar trap shortly after this. The irony, irony, he wrote this little poem. This sort of Pity Sir Robert Wilson Watson Watt strange target of his radar plot. And this, with others, I could mention a victim of his own invention. <laughs> and, uh, you know what it made me think of? Sister Marion worked on that program for the IRS. Got it all going, got it up and running. Yeah. It was a new program to catch people that go out of state and buy large objects and and get out of paying taxes by buying them in another state coming back. The first one they caught was her uncle. <laughs> uh, boy, that's pitiful, you know? We're going to give her a hard time. My own niece! Well, that's all part of it. Stand with me. I hope we understand. Do good. It's never wrong to do good. Um, 
share a little love, a little light, hallelujah, a little joy, hallelujah, encourage one another, because we're going to reap what we sow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, thanks for very much for that tonight. Appreciate this. Rush, you don't be with us. Sister Tori was going to be with us, but she got sick, so we kind of took her place. But, uh, we're glad she come be with us. But uh, we want to keep praying for revival. Uh, it, it's not absolute yet. You know. It is positive that uh, Brother, uh, I actually forget that brother. Want to say what? Now. No, the other one. Oh, Owens. Owens. Owens, yeah. Brother Owens is going to be with us for the 14th, but I talked to Brother Nelms, and I want to try to got it set up if, if it's going to work out. I want to have a our fifth Sunday service is going to be a Saturday and Sunday service. Get Brother Nelms to come preach for us Saturday night. So I want to keep what we're trying to do with the fifth Sunday service, Friends and Neighbors Day. I want to try to get everybody who can to come. Saturday and Sunday. See if we can get some folks stirred up, some folks filled with the Holy Ghost. So ask everybody and anybody. Praise the Lord. But I want to see souls saved. I want to see God get a hold of people. Uh, Brother Nel if Brother Nelms can't make it, I'll try to talk to Brother Owens into doing Saturday and Sunday. But uh, I think Brother Nelms is going to be able to make it. Praise God. I don't know how we, well, we won't pay for this, but. Lord will work that out too. <laughs> kind of let things get a little low in the checking account. We gave some money to Iron Hill, actually, during this revival. I was kind of in on it with Brother Graves, and I just didn't feel right him having a foot to build everything that was going on through that revival. So we kind of wrote them a check. Well, actually, the church didn't write the check yet. <laughs> We didn't have a church check, so we wrote it out of our checking account. But anyway, however it works out, 